Cricket fans across the world were glued to their television sets today as the high-octane and much-awaited Asia Cup clash was underway in Palike, Sri Lanka today. The India-Pakistan clash this time has generated special interest back home as Nepal are the first-time participants at the tournament. However, the India-Pakistan match today had to be abandoned as rain played spoil sport and both teams shared a point each. Good evening, I'm Abhudeh Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahar more involved in formal programs as people's agenda lag behind. Private sector complain of lack of investment environment. Madhya province witnesses five parliamentary committees in six years to probe financial irregularities. CIAA's attention drawn. Close on heels of the success of the moon landing, Indian Space Agency launches a rocket to study the sun in its first solar mission. And much-awaited Asia Cup match between India and Pakistan abandoned due to rain after India gave Pakistan a victory target of three, 267 runs, a point each shared without Pakistan having the opportunity to bat. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal, while assuming the top executive post of the country for the third time, had committed of doing exemplary works by spending more time on constructive works and less on formal programs. However, there have been massive discrepancies between the between what Prime Minister Dahal committed and what he is doing now. Prime Minister Dahal, while inaugurating the three-month campaign of CPN Maoist Center to increase public contact, claimed that his government had executed what he said historic works. Even as Prime Minister Dahal claimed that all the government sectors are functioning to perfection, the federal parliament has remained without business. The Prime Minister seems to lack the understanding of the kinds of problems faced by the general public. In the third term of, the, of Prime Minister Dahal, the federal parliament has only formulated a single law. The government has ignored a number of issues concerning direct impact on public life and good governance, while agendas of common minimum programs unveiled six months ago have not been implemented. The government service delivery has been reported lackluster. As over 100 justices have not been appointed from the Supreme Court to district courts, the cases have been piling all the while. The country's economic sector, too, has been reeling under a massive inflation seen in the market. The businesses have been complaining of the government's inability to pay back dues and the failure to improve the investment environment. The government, by riding on the Lalita Niwas land scam, 60-kilogram gold scam, fake Bhutanese refugee scam, is trying to protect as an anti-corruption drive. However, within the face of political cover, the government's probe on these cases, despite positive beginning, have weakened. In our public voice segment today, we have asked people in several provinces, how satisfied are they regarding the works carried out by the government? Let's take a look at what they had to say. कतै रुमा लिएको कि कतै अलमा लिएको जस्तो चाहिँ भान भएको छ सुनकाण्डहरु हेर्नुस् ठुला ठुला तस्करहरु हेर्नुस् भुटानी शरणार्थी हेर्नुस् ललिता निवास हेर्नुस् अहिलेको सरकारले कहाँ के गर्यो त भ्रष्टाचार मात्रै गर्यो हरहराको जग्गाहरु सरकारको सम्पत्तिहरु सबै अब खोजीकारी भइरा छ सरकारलाई कसरी लामो समयसम्म टिकाउने भन्ने चाहिँ अलिकति त्यस्तो खालको आशा हामीले बुझिरा छ सरकारले हामीमा युवालाई रोजगार दिनुपर्ने हो दिएन सकेको छैन भन्ने गुनासाहरु गाउँ गाउँमा छ भ्रष्टाचारको जुन चाहिँ फाइलहरु खोलिरहनु भएको छ त्यो चाहिँ हामीहरुलाई राम्रै लागेको छ फौजदारी मुद्दा लागेकाहरुलाई पनि छुटाएर आफू टिक्ने मात्र काम गरेको छ यो सरकारले अहिले हेर्दा भनेको जनताको जीवनस्तर उकासिने हालको काममा केही पनि चासो नदेखेको देखियो भ्रष्टाचारीहरुको ठाउँ ठाउँमा पक्राउ भइरडा हामी धेरै सन्तुष्टि छौँ सत्ता जोगाउने यो मन्त्री फेर्ने उ मन्त्री फेर्ने आफ्नो मान्छेलाई जोगाउने त्यस्तो गरिरहेछ भ्रष्टाचारका प्रकरणहरुमा जुन किसिमको अनुसन्धान भइराखेको छ त्यो हेर्ने मैले अत्यन्त सकारात्मक पक्ष रूपमा पनि यसलाई हेर्न सकिन्छ सरकार आफ्नो सत्ता कसरी टिकाउने खेल मात्रै लागेको बुझिन्छ Since the Madhesh province government was established six years ago, five special parliamentary investigation committees have been formed to probe into financial irregularities. 
Only the payment of the consumer committee has been made, while the reports of the other investigation committees have not been implemented. It has been a month and a half since the Special Parliamentary Investigation Committee started its probe into ministers of Madhya province accused of being involved in the projects mentioned in the Red Book against the work procedure and misusing the aid amounts. After the end of the budget session some two months ago, more than 15 million rupees was transferred to various offices. The investigation started after a conditional aid of 1.25 billion rupees was accused of being provided to the local level. Although only 15 days of the tenure remain for the committee, the finance ministry has not given any interest to the situation. The Special Parliamentary Investigation Committee called the secretaries to a meeting and demanded answers from them after it was found that ministries had breached the work division regulation while distributing aid and transferring budget amounts. Although the investigation committee directed the secretaries to provide reasonable answers, the ministries have not yet turned in any document even after a lapse of 10 days. After the Madhya province failed in curbing financial irregularities and maintaining financial discipline, along with the Special Parliamentary Investigation Committee, Corruption Watchdog Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority has also started investigations against the ministers. As per the demand of the main opposition CPNUML, the Parliamentary Committee was formed on the last day of the first session of the second tenure. CPN UML's provincial convention has started from today. Lumini Province's first convention kicked off in Butuol Rupendehi today. Party Chairperson K.P. Sharma Oli inaugurated the convention at the International Conference Center in Ramnagar, Butuol. Present at the inauguration program were Party Vice Chairpersons Bishnu Podel and Yuvraj Gewali, Deputy General Secretary Pradeep Gewali, Secretaries Gokarna Bista, Chavilal Bishokarma, province in charge Padma Aryal, among others. Preparations are being made to elect a new leadership for the provincial committee through the convention. Palpa's Radha Krishna Karel, Putan's Hari Rijal and Dang's Lakshman Acharya are in the fray for the election of the province chair. The party has informed that the new leadership will be decided through consensus. However, if a consensus is not reached, an election will be held. Representatives selected from 82,895 party members from 12 districts along with 1,004 members selected from 23 public organizations are participating in the convention. After Lumini Province, CPNUML's provincial convention is scheduled for Madhesh Province for 22nd and 23rd of September. Likewise, the provincial convention in Bagmati is scheduled for 25th and 26th of September, Karnali for 27th and 28th, and Koshi for 29th and 30th of September. Meanwhile, the provincial convention for Gandiki Province will be held on 2nd and 3rd of October. A Kathmandu Valley specific convention is scheduled for 6th and 7th of October, and the provincial convention for Sudurpashim Province will be held on 8th and 9th of October. CPNUML has given the province chairpersons the same status as the Politburo members, due to which central members are also competing in the election of the chairpersons. Senior citizens and other people who have been receiving Social Security allowance are required to renew their Social Security identity cards by the end of the present Nepali month of Bhadra. Prior to this, the provision for renewal was by the end of the Nepali month of Kartik. The Department of National Identity Card and Civil Registration has said that if the service seekers fail to renew their identity cards, they would not receive the Social Security allowance. The department has said that the service seekers are required to present themselves at the respective ward offices to get their identity cards and KYC forms renewed. It has been informed that if the service seekers fail to get their identity cards renewed, their names would be automatically removed from the state records. Meanwhile, there is a provision for the service seekers to get re-registered in case their names are removed. So far, only 65% of service seekers have got their identity cards renewed. The department has also urged the respective ward offices to inform the general public about the latest development. Some 3.8 million people have been availing themselves of various kinds of social security allowance. Senior citizens, single women, marginalized, physically challenged and 
Communities facing extinct, like Rautes, have been receiving social security allowance in the country. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday, we had asked you, what's your take on repeated strikes in sectors of emergency service providers? 41% voted for A, managerial lapses, 52% voted for B, lack of accountability, and 7% voted for C, compulsion of employees. Here's today's question. What's your take on the efforts towards adding a parliamentary committee? Your options are A, trying to increase expenses, B, politics of power share, and C, need of the hour. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the international update. Following quickly on the success of the moon landing, the Indian Space Agency launched a rocket earlier today to study the sun in its first solar mission. The rocket left a trail of smoke and fire as scientists clapped a live broadcast on the Indian Space Research Organization's ISRO website showed. The broadcast was watched by more than 860,000 viewers while thousands gathered at a viewing gallery near the launch site to see the liftoff of the probe, which will aim to study solar winds, which can cause disturbance on Earth commonly seen as auroras. Named after the Hindi word for the sun, the Aditya L-1 spacecraft took flight barely a week after India beat Russia to become the first country to land on the south pole of the moon. While Russia had a more powerful rocket, India's Chandrayaan-3 out-endured the Luna 25 to execute a textbook landing. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is pushing for India's space missions to play a larger role on a world stage dominated by the United States and China. The Aditya L-1 is designed to travel 1.5 million kilometers or 930,000 miles over four months, far short of the sun, which is 150 million kilometers from the Earth. It is meant to stop its journey in a kind of parking lot in space called a Lagrange point, where objects tend to stay put because of balancing gravitational forces, reducing fuel consumption for the spacecraft. Sports News. The much-awaited India versus Pakistan match played in Sri Lanka's Palikale Stadium was abandoned as rain played spoil sport and both teams shared a point each. India had given Pakistan a victory target of 267 runs, but the match ended without Pakistan having the opportunity to bat. India elected to bat first after winning the toss, but soon found themselves in trouble as they lost the prized scalp of Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli to the bowling of Shain Shah Afridi. Shubham Gill and Shreyas Iyer tried to rebuild the Indian innings. However, a flurry of wickets saw India reduced to 4 for 66 runs in the 15th over. A Har Harris Rofe picked up the wickets of Gill and Iyer. The Indian innings was revived by a partnership between Ishan Kishan and Hardik Pandya as they put on 138 runs for the fifth wicket. Ishan Kishan departed after scoring 82 runs, while Pandya made 87 runs. At one stage, India threatened to cross the 300-run mark. However, Pakistan made a comeback with wick quick wickets at the end to bowl out the opposition for 266 runs in 48.4 overs. Shainja Afridi was the most successful bowler for Pakistan with three wickets, while Harris Rofe and Naseem Shah picked up three wickets each. Nepal are taking on Bhutan at the ICC Women T20 Asia Region World Cup qualifiers. The match at UKM Oval in Malaysia is scheduled for 7.15 kickoff Nepal time. Nepal will be looking for their third consecutive victory in the tournament, having registered wins against Malaysia and Bahrain. Nepal and UAE have equal four points in Group B, while UAE leads the table on better run rate. Nepal have never lost to Bhutan, while Nepal skipper Rubina Chetri has talked about efforts to improve batting performance. In other matches, Malaysia will take on Bahrain, UAE will play against Qatar, China will take on Thailand, while Kuwait are pitted against Hong Kong tomorrow. 
That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.